happening. Today's video I'm going to be going over some fly fishing footage. Um, quick disclaimer for anybody watching, uh, most of the fish I catch in this video are bluegill and I'm also a pretty beginner at fly fishing so you're going to see a lot of false casting and miss hook sets and stuff like that. Anyway, we're going to get into it. So the first couple of clips you're going to see in this video are showcased at a local pond in my hometown and uh, I only managed to get a couple of nice looking fish out of there so the rest of them are you're going to see it at a private pond that uh, is at my brother-in-law's house that's stocked and that's where most of that footage is going to come from. The first one you see me catch in this video looks like it's one of these hybrid bluegill. They're kind of a funny looking fish. So they, it kind of looks like a mix of a rock bass, sunfish, bluegill. I'm pretty sure it's what they call a hybrid bluegill sunfish. I'm not entirely sure. Not quite sure what I was doing when I was trying to unhook this fish. Uh, I think I was pretty sure I could lip him or something like that, but he ends up uh, wiggling himself free anyway. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and toss him right back. The cool thing about getting all this footage of fly fishing, especially being that I'm a beginner, is when I'm when I'm going over the footage and explaining what I'm doing, I'm also learning things as I go. Like, uh, for instance, like uh, you'll see me false cast a few times in this video, and that what that means is like when you just keep on casting back and forth, back and forth, and uh, that's really not a good thing to do because you're gonna tire yourself out. It creates other problems, like you could snag in the tree behind me like you see in these videos or you could tangle up your line and stuff. Fly fishing takes a lot of patience. I first got into fly fishing when I was around 16 years old. Um, my, my stepdad's a big fisherman so he, he got me into fishing. I can't remember exactly how I got into fly fishing. I'm pretty sure it was just from watching him do it throughout the years and stuff. But like anyway, my first job I worked at Taco Bell and I, I remember the very first paycheck I got was like 200 bucks or something like that and I went and spent half of it on a, one of the Copper River fly rods from uh, Cabela's and yeah pretty much been trying to fly fish since since I'm still a beginner it's it's really good to go out and find a nice little small pond like this that's stocked or something like that I mean that's taught me a lot this uh, that pond and that in the first couple of clips you'll see they uh, do a yearly trout stock on it. I believe they put um, brook trout and rainbow trout in it. Um, hopefully I can get some more footage of that early uh, spring next year so I can show exactly what kind of trout are in there. I mean, there, there's some nice one in there. I, if you look at the cover photo on my YouTube page, there's you'll see a, there's like 10 of them. We caught our lemon in there one day and they're all nice sized brook trout and rainbow trout. I don't get a lot of good fly fishing in the area I'm at. Um, we gotta go about an hour or so north to get into the nice rivers where there's good trout stocks and stuff like that. So my plan w was when making these videos was I was going for largemouth, and uh, later later in the video you're gonna see somebody come, one of my buddies come up and catch one of these largemouth, oh, nice and uh, it's, <laughs> it was kind of discouraging because I had been fly fishing that spot all day, and uh, he goes out there with a regular spinning rod and throws a fake worm and a bobber on it and. Oh, yeah within like a few casts he ends up catching one. It was a pretty nice size one too. You know obviously fly fishing is pretty uh, expert level type fishing and uh, one thing I'm, I'm starting to learn from it is uh, this is really important is your leader line. Um, the fish are pretty smart. You'd be surprised if they see your leader line bunching up on the water and it ain't laying flat it, or you know the, the the flow of the current is causing it to do like a, a round bend in it and, it, and it, it's gonna it's gonna tear the water the fish in the water will see that so I, I think part of the reason I wasn't able to hook into many of these largemouth is because my leader line was jacked up and kept bunching up and stuff like that this this rod I got right here I need to put a new leader line on I've just been I ended up losing one of my next grasshoppers on one of the largemouth um I didn't include the footage of that in here. Because, I mean, it really wasn't much, and I didn't feel like digging through it to find the footage of me losing a fish anyway. I definitely think if you're new to fly fishing and you're looking into getting into it, number one thing is being patient because, man, it can it can make you mad. 
I've, I've I've hooked it in the side of my face. I hooked it in the side of my neck when I was first learning how to fly fish, and I got barbed hooks on my on my flies too. So we ended up having to cut the hook off and fishing it back through my neck. Not a fun time. Probably a good idea to wear a pair of sunglasses or safety glasses. Um, another way I learned in the beginning was I didn't actually tie a fly on my line. I just sit there and cast the line back and forth until I could kind of figure out the groove. Um, you know, it's 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 a lot of wrist action, not so much arm movement, and that's it. Took me a while to kind of get the feel for that because my stepdad was always telling me to use your wrist and stuff like that. And for for whatever reason, naturally you just want to throw that rod back and forth, and you're just gonna tire yourself out in no time, and you're not making any progress because you're just tangling your line up. I mean, you, you, if if you get into fly fishing and you're not used to it, you'll see it's it's definitely pretty tedious in the beginning. I say all that, and then in this footage you can see. I was reeling in this little tiny fish and it, you can see my line gets all bunched up and stuff like that. I mean like I'm not a complete beginner but stuff like this still does happen and it gets on your nerves a little bit like I'd be tripping over my line and stuff or it just kind of gets all bunched up and you, just, you really gotta be patient because it's, it's definitely a tedious sport to learn. Definitely not going to be able to cover everything in this video. This is just kind of some tips and trips, tricks I learned from, you know, just being a beginner. You know, I feel like it's a good idea for people to kind of get some insight from other beginners when they're learning new stuff like this, especially fly fishing. Because like I said, I can go back and go over this footage. And when I'm reviewing it, I'm learning because I'm thinking of different things I can do. Like, for instance, like when you're casting that fly, you got to make sure you try to land it gently on the water. You don't want to be smacking the water and stuff like that because th these fish get spooked really easily. I mean, you'd be surprised. They're pretty smart. I've really enjoyed picking up fly fishing in my lifetime because uh, it's it's a lot more rewarding type of fishing. And I, I guess another thing I just thought of is um, you'll probably see me try and set the hook by pulling line. I, I don't think that's necessarily a good way to set the hook. I don't know if there's any avid fly fishermen in here, but it looks like the most successful hook sets I had was when I had the line tight and I pulled the rod up like a, like a regular rod and then it just seemed like it worked out a little bit better for me. I'm hopefully going to be making some how-to videos on stuff like this like with fly fishing and different ways to tie knots and tie your flies and pretty much about you know you, you got to use fly float on these flies or else they won't they'll sink in the water and these fish are biting on top of the water they see it sinking in the water they're not going to go for it some of these flies Granted, there are some flies that are meant for being under the water, but they're designed for underwater bait. You know, these these fish are they they're particular about the types of food they eat it, when it comes to this sometimes. So, it's getting into fall time around Michigan. So the salmon are running. We're getting into hunting season, stuff like that. All this kind of footage I'm hoping to get up on my channel. I've been having a lot of fun making these videos. It's just cool to go back and watch these videos and see the 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 fishing I've had throughout the year. I know I said a lot of these fishes that I caught in this video are uh, bluegill, but I, I did actually manage to catch one largemouth bass. I mean, this thing had to have been the smallest largemouth bass I'd ever seen though, but I'm still pretty proud that I made it happen with at least one of them. So the flies that I was using in this video, um, you probably seen in the first clip, I was using one of them popper flies, which those are good. I mean, I'm pretty sure the bass like them, that's why I put one on, because like I said, I was targeting largemouth bass, but you always got these pesky little bluegill going after your bait. Um, and then the second one, I, I use a fake grasshopper. Man, those things are like, they're like dynamite. Like, they, the fish just can't get enough of them. And then I, I ended up catching quite a bit more of them on a, like a fake spider, water spider type thing, with them little legs dangling out. I definitely underestimated how much time I had to cover all these little tips and tricks in here. I didn't realize that there was so much I was going to be saying about it, but yeah, anyway, I'm definitely going to be making more videos about fly fishing because I've really been enjoying this sport, and uh, there's there, there's nothing like sitting on a river, just a peaceful, dead, calm morning, and you're just seeing fish jump left and right, and there's nothing but nature surrounding you. I mean, it, it really is something that humanity and society needs in life. I mean, it's, it's to break free from all this that's going on around us. I mean, sometimes you just got to go back to your roots and see the world for what it is, and then you, you come to appreciate things more, you know. It, it's I guess it's part of becoming an older man, you know. Are you guys all right? Do you want to go get food? Am I, are you waiting on me or what? 
I'm open to any sort of criticism and stuff like that because I know there's probably going to be some avid fishermen to click on this video if there is people watching and they're going to be probably ripping me apart for some of the things I'm doing but I'm, I'm definitely open to criticism like I said I'm, I'm learning as I go too so I, I'm definitely willing to take anybody's advice that knows more about the sport than I do but I'm going to just keep on learning the way I've been doing it there's so many different variables when it comes to fly fishing it's like a never ending game that you just you're never going to master I feel like Man, that's a nice one. Holy crap. Look at this one. Oh, come here, buddy. Here, you'll see me get all excited because I caught one of these hybrid bluegill. And man, I gotta say, it's, if, one, if you leave these fish alone for a certain amount of time in a stock pond, they really do got some time to kind of blow up. I mean, as far as I know, this pond didn't really get fished much yeah. because, I mean, like I said, my brother-in-law's lived in this house, I don't know, probably a year or so. And it's, I haven't seen many people fish it. I mean, we've really only been just now fishing it in the last like month or two. So, and man, we've been putting up some nice fish out of there. There's some nice size, uh, largemouth. Hopefully, I can get my stepdad on here and get some footage of him catching them because man, he's like he. It it would be it's amazing to watch him fish because he's just a master at it. He was he was hammering them big largemouth left and right last time he was there fishing it. Holy crap, there's some nice bluegill in here. It probably sounds like I'm dogging on catching bluegill a little bit in this video I just thought about, but man, I, I can't wait to go and catch some of these. And uh, I got a river up north that they, I, I just recently found out about, and I was catching some nice bluegill. I'm definitely going to be getting a nice collection of them going and making a really cool cook, catch and cook video because I got a good system for cooking these bluegill. And man, they're, they're some of the best tasting fish to me. I, I, that might be controversial to say, but I, I know they're pretty good tasting at least. Anyway, so... Yeah, if you're enjoying the content, definitely go ahead and give me a like and a subscribe. I plan on posting a lot more content like this, filet videos, cook videos, all sorts of stuff. I got plenty of plans for this channel. It's, it's, it's Like I said, it's been some of the most fun I've had in my entire life was doing this stuff. So yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. If you're still staying tuned, I, I appreciate it, and we'll catch you next time.